Prepare yourselves for battle, heroes. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, into the Nexus Gaming Series Division C. My name is Bahamut. On the left-hand side, we're going to be taking a look at Zul'jin Distillery with a Diablo, Vala, Deckard, Falstad, and Malfiel. On the right-hand side, it is Heavy Group Therapy, which will be Alex Straza, Muradin, Kael'thas, Leoric, and Maiev. Vala's going to go fire at Will, level 1, so she'll be taking a few shots at that Will guy, unfortunately for them. No, it's going to be W build for Vala, so how many level 1 stacks will Vala have by the end of the game? Will she have 69 or more, 68 or less? Zul'jin Stiller is an amazing name. They've been around for ages. It's, uh, that's, an, that's a team I have casted quite a bit one of those team names i see and i'm like all right i'll cast them for sure they've been around the block a lot of resets on the fan and knives there from plant facts i wonder if plant facts has any interesting plant facts for us leorg is already headed over into top lane fealty into death nice just memento for our Maev. we have globes for the kalefoss as i mentioned the mana addict we have dwarf block for muradin and the live and let live. We got the James Bond title for our Alex Straws. On the opposing side, it's going to be the Reaper, the Death Reach. So Wraith Strike range increased by 35%. Umbral Bind is going to hold the Ankle Shot in place here. The Flame Strike and the Living Bomb do apply. And Nelio finds that kill with Kale Foss. Falstad. Going to be on five stacks currently of that Gathering Storm. Q build. Decker came with the Sapphire. Increased the slow from 35% to 65%. And we're also going to be seeing, as I mentioned, that... Uh, Fire at will for the Vala and the Devil's Dew on Diablo. Gotta double check that Decker Kane stat here in a second. False stat flying in from the Hall of Storms. Camp in the bottom lane should be grabbed. I don't think there'll be an invade in time. Decker Kane does scout out with a scroll of ceiling, but no one can step up as the gravity lapse will would have caught Diablo or someone else. Alright, let's check really quickly. Decker Kane, baseline slow, 35%. Yes! Caster math is good. Miz on this bird and trying to get away. Dwarf tosses away, lands the Stormbolt. Be freesh. Couple autos in, but no kill on the Murden. Six stacks on fire at will. Level one. We got ten channel points on belief and doubt. All right, well, we got odds, so there's something. That's as much as I literally can ask for. Well, the vaults into the flame strike. I think she was looking to be aggressive. Gets chunked down to 50%. Has a potion from Deckard nearby. And Malfiel up against the Orc in top lane seems to be doing just fine here. Thank you, Kel. Ooh, 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 ooh. Invade onto the camp. Circle of life down from the Alexstrasza. Scrolling ceiling, scroll of ceiling from Decker Kane does find one. Big flame strike from Kael'thas. Led trying to back away. Be free a little bit low. That's a good heck load of damage into Vol, and she does go down. Eight stacks currently is the flame strike from Kael'thas still coming out. We do have a circle of life again from Alex Straza. Ankle shot low, so is Plant Facts. Vault of the Wards with the Umbra Bind. Pulls Ankle shot back in. Tries to commit to the trade, but it doesn't work out. Decker Kane with the last bit of mana gets one healing potion onto Diablo. Miz will be taken out by Malfiel, but Malfiel, I think, should be picked off here. The camp does go over to the side of Zul'jin Distillery, and they actually find the double kill on top of this, so all in all, Nutcracker making the rotation was humongous for the ally team. W at level seven for our uh, Falstead here, gonna be going into the Lightning Rod Static Shield. I used to take that quite a bit, just it gives you a little bit of a uh, little bit of shielding, which isn't too bad, but honestly, Hammer Gains or Afterburner, just really hard to pass up at this point. Uh, Arsenal for our Vala, which is big for her. You get that mana return as well from hitting enemy heroes, which if you don't take this at level 4, especially in ARAMs, you are absolutely mana starved. Now you may say, Bahamut, why wouldn't you just take auto build in ARAMs and just get all the stacks? Because sometimes I miss position and die. So I take W build. Or Q build. Hey, if I can get like 90 stacks in like 10 minutes, I think I'm I think I'm doing alright with W build. Alright, well our first objective phase easily over to the side of Zul'jin Distillery. Kael'thas trying to clear out the wave a little bit right there. Six stacks on his regeneration globes level one. No pin down for the Maiev. We do have this camp in the top right being grabbed. Camps on Infernal Shrines though don't disappear when the objective phase does spawn. This is actually a bit of a late grab on that camp with Leorc and Maiev. Yeah, Maiev actually leaves. Leorc takes over the camp. The rest of the team starts clearing out the subjective phasing. 
And Vala sits at 11 stacks with our prediction about to close. The Orc in a flank position. Murder Dwarf Toss is in. Has the heavy impact at level 7. Gets the slow onto Decker Kane. The Umbral Bind from Maya pulls 2 in. The Orc with a few slows of his own with that paralyzing rage level 4. Increasing that skeletal swing slow. Lead should be taken down and sunk to the bottom of the sea. Because lead is heavy. I thought I had something there. Pinned down does have one stack, but I believe that's only the uh, first round of rewards here. I think he still needs to get that quadra hit, because otherwise, yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah, the bonus damage, 35%. So yeah, hit three enemy heroes with a single fan of knives, so that, that one quest is done. We'll check on this a little bit later on. 26 stacks for Falstead, 15 for the Vala. As we have 69 souls on Diablo. Very nice for him. A fire stomp goes out. No soul to flame. He does have the sacrificial soul level four. A little flame strike from Kalefoss right there. Diablo gets zoned by that one. Ten talent here on the way, so let's go ahead and take a look at all of that. Does this button work properly? Ah, it is actually. Wonderful. I can't believe we're about to have our 58th Baja Ross on Sunday. Wild. Well, with 10 Talentiers just about here, no major structures have been felled. We do have the mid lane fort a little uh, damaged here, around 75% HP. 10 Talentier on the right hand side, Life Binder, Avatar, Entomb Containment Disc, and. I'd like to see a Phoenix out from the Kalefoss personally. I think it's a really, really good tool for siege, objective control, and team fighting. Pyroblast can be fun and everything, but I, I do think that the Phoenix is just better utility as they want to dive on the Vol. The Entomb from Leork will be coming out. Let's caught inside. And once again, the Decker Kane will be taken down. Overpowered to the Shadow Charge. The Life Binder doesn't activate in time onto Murad, and he does get taken out. Honestly, Life Binder may be going out like a, a one to like a half a second to a second late, like earlier, I think could have easily saved Murad in. But. That's not the case. He does go down. It's three to six in kills, favoring the side of heavy group therapy here on map number one in our first best of three of the day of Infernal Shrines in Division C of Nexus Gaming Series. Apocalypse for our Diablo on the opposing side. We'll see Stay Well and Listen. Reign of Vengeance for the Vala. Gust Falstag. Gotta be careful with that Gust. Lot of, lot of setup utility for the Apocalypse or even follow up with the Reign of Vengeance and, and stay well and listen. I'd really love to see Falstead find like a gust into like a like a corner, like a, like a conclave if you will. And then maybe we see that stay a while Reign Apocalypse um, layered CC. Malfeel's holding level 10. I assume it's last rights. Actually, maybe Torment of Souls. Last rights, I feel like, could be mitigated by Lifebinder. Lifebinder, by the way, is a very low cooldown at 50 seconds. Stormbolt to check the bush, and Miz finds Dwit. Diablo will not be taken out right there. 22 stacks. Stay one. Listen, finds that Muradin. Shadow Charge, Overpower, into the Apocalypse. Reign of Vengeance. The last rights is there, and midair, Muradin does go down. Sub Z up. I or Z Z up. How you doing today, bud? Happy Thursday to you. The Eve before the subathon, chat. The Eve before the subathon. We got a lot of fun stuff tomorrow. Leoric doing his best to manage top lane, as I also mentioned at level four, did go into paralyzing rage, so no Neil Peasants on that one for faster camp or objective clear. And looks like this is our first objective on the left hand side. No, second objective, excuse me. First objective was grabbed. Oh, wait a minute. Leora gets the Wraith Walk activation in time. Can he get out of here? Diablo will chase a bit, but Bird taps well, and looks like Vala gets one hit with the multi-shot in an auto. Our frozen Punisher for bottom lane locks down the structure. Is going to get some damage there. The fort front gate is being taken out. Vala's hatred at max right now. Punisher jumps over to that. Maev. The elbow comes in with the shadow charge. The vault the warrens afterwards. Spirit of Vengeance activation. Gets the teleport out, and Maev will not be taken down. 
Another jump onto this Maev. She'll get the Life Binder activation. Last Rites goes out, but she won't be killed by that one. Be free low, but the Flame Strike from Kael'thas will not take her down. It's the Muradin who almost gets picked off. Avatar is done. Pin down for Maev is fully completed. 9 minutes 31. She's got the questing talent done. See right here, bonus damage 50% for her. HGC was taken, yes, yes, the Heroes Global Circuit was taken. You still gotta label things HGC. <clears throat> still just living in the past when we can when we can move forward and create a new future. Together, as a Heroes of Storm community. Gust from Falstad, a containment disc onto Diablo, the Sewa and Listen activation as well. Led trying to get out of here, but Maev will be able to take him down. The Orc is doing his best, but unfortunately he'll be traded. As Alex Straza, Dragon Queen form, zones the Malfeel away, and it looks like this Diablo will not be taken down. A bit of a haphazard fight right there, but it looks like just a trade between both sides. Oh, wait, hold on. I didn't think we were going to have another fight here, but Ankle Shot will go down. Caught out by the Muradin. Falstead picked off right there. Decker Kane about to respawn. The Orc back in the mix as well. In two up in ten seconds. Gets the slow onto this Diablo, and I thought they were... Yeah, they're still chasing onto the Vala. She gets a Vault, she gets a Mount. Muradin's scouting out for her, but Vala has disengaged. And Diablo Firestomp trying to get some dismounts there to allow her to back away. For our Twitch gamblers, we have 38 stacks currently on the Vala. Level 1, 30, uh, 53 for our Falstead. 21 on that Kael'thas. Two stacks for our Diablo. We gotta find two heroes with regeneration globe quests on opposing sides and do a Twitch gamble on that of like who ends with more globes at the end. That'd be fun. Apocalypse activation by the Diablo. Muradin trying to get out of here. Gets the Dwarf Toss in time. Gets caught by D uh, by the Decker Kane Scroll of Sealing. There's the Phoenix from Kael'thas getting a couple of autos onto the Malfeel Nutcracker. But that is the end of that engagement. Dude, wait, hold on. You, your, your, Mal your, your player name is Nutcracker and you don't have the Christmas Malfeel skin. Disappointment is measurable. That is unfortunate. 23 regeneration globes. Level 16 is here on the right hand side. And continue to see the Fan of Knives build for our Maev. Murder with the stone form or more sustainability. Alex Straza will pick up the tough love. The Orc Ray. Okay, that's a good entomb. Catching the Decker Kane. The Gust from Falstead. That was the anti synergy I was talking about. Gotta be careful of that one. A relatively low cooldown for Gust, a little bit longer for Stay a While. I think it's 70 seconds for Stay a While, and Gust is 60, so not the worst in the world, but two heroics burned right there. Objective phase announced. Uh, the timing is not the best. A Diablo does find the Muradin. Falstead with a huge hammering. Starts to get a few autos in. Muradin, Avatar, and Storm Form activated. Malthiel trying to find someone here. Throws the last rites on the Miz, and that is definitely not a target you want to throw it on. Unfortunately. The Kael'thas is kind of in an okay spot to actually be the one to get a last rights thrown onto. Be free slow. Bird goes in. The mace mace to the face of that Vala will take her down. And Maev is traded. Decker Kane super potions around. Bird looks like they're able to mount up and disengage. Meanwhile, there's the fallen shaman, but it's targeted by the keep front gate, so it will be cleared out. Hey, Alex Straza low. No last rights for Malfeel for 34 seconds. The gust from Falstad available. They will trade Malfeel for Alex Straza with that flame strike thrown down by Kael'thas. And it still is a 3v3. Granted, the healer available on the left-hand side for Zul Jin Distillery. Yo, Stark, good morning, bud. How goes the casting? We just started, actually. We watched the uh, Xbox showcase. There wasn't really anything in there for me. I guess the Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater trailer was pretty cool to see. Uh, but yeah, no lies to Pete. That was what I was really hoping for. This Kael'thas is super low on mana. Is going to be able to activate his Arcane Barrier, but Falstead should have the damage. Oh, the Containment Disc is enough to zone Falstead. Diablo souls were consumed. So he's about he's already respawned, down to 25. Malfeel back as well. Looks like objective phase number three of the game. Arcane Punisher will be picked up by the right-hand side of Heavy Group Therapy. Red team has summoned an they announced an Age of uh, Mythology. Oh, yeah, they did. They did. They did. They did. 
we uh, we memed about that one a little bit. Oh, Vala, no! 43 stacks for our Vala, 68 on the Falstad as this Punisher in mid lane will take down the fort here. I don't think... That's a huge jump into Entomb. That's absolutely massive, but a beautiful gust from Falstad finds the disengage. Unfortunately, Kael'thas did go into Fury of the Sunwell, and he gets that Flame Strike inside, and that's enough to lower the health pool of Deckard for the spinning blades of Laser Doom. There's a name for this. Hold on. Uh, it's just literally Arcane. It's just called Arcane. All right. Well, anyways, uh, the Flame Strike was really good right there from Kael'thas. The it's just like they just call the spinning lasers Arcane. That's just funny to me. Anyways, be, like that was such a good entomb from Leoric. Such a good moment from Leoric right there. So bottom lane fort will be confirmed. Top lane wave does get shoved, but there's an enemy minion wave available. Mortar Punisher will be up next in the bottom lane. 20 talent here on the right-hand side for heavy group therapy. A two-level difference, an eight-kill difference. We have Shadow Orb Huntress. No, Shadow Strike, excuse me. We'll see the Flamethrower Kael'thas buried alive. Avatar upgrade, which we rarely ever see the Unstoppable Force, as well as the Ritual of Life for Alexstrasza. We'll take a look at Muradin's level 20, because we don't see it very often, so we can take a peek and see what that looks like after the siege does end, because I do want to see what ends up happening here. New York Wraith walks in, goes for the Entomb, but Falstead Barrel Rolled is already getting him out. That's going to be Diablo inside, the Phoenix out from Kael'thas. No, I thought I heard it. That's a good gust from Falstead to push the enemies further in. Dwight getting a little bit low does activate the Apocalypse. That's Diablo, the first one to get picked off here. Ankle shot low, so is that Deckard Kane. It looks like the Impaler Camp and the Minion Wave have arrived. Back down to bottom lane keeps. They're going to focus on that. So while active, Avatar grants 20 armor and causes Murden basic attacks to reduce the cooldown of Thunderclap and Dwarf Toss by 0.75 seconds. Interesting. Okay, so you're gaining 20 armor and cooldown reductions on Thunderclap and Dwarf Toss, but nothing on your Stormbolt. Okay, interesting. I mean, I guess you get the cooldown on Stormbolt anyway, so I guess it would it'd be redundant. Or it'd be wild, actually, not redundant. Core shielding is dropping. That bottom lane keep did go down as we were taking a look at the level 20 for Muradin. Plant Fax is not going to get picked up. Ola goes in with the vault forward to multi shot, but can't get the kill. The Life Binder, Ritual of Life activation in time onto Plant Fax. There's a last right somewhere. Nope. Still off a of cooldown. Thought I heard the, the noise for that. Core shielding is just, or the core HP has been slowly dropped. Leork's been working on this, and that is going to be map number one over the side of Heavy Group Therapy. GG. Well played. Yo, I, what's up? How am I doing? I am uh, nine subs away from October movie night. That's how I'm doing. Oh, we got a uh, we got our subathon tomorrow. I'm excited. Got a lot of fun games. We've got I've uh, got some sub goals and stuff like that written down. So basically, if we finish out the entire subathon tomorrow, we'll hit a bunch of sub goals, which uh, we'll talk about tomorrow. We got a bunch of fun games. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to the subathon tomorrow. If we can hit our, uh, if we can hit our sub goal of October movie night tonight, today, that'd be really, really nice just to hit a sub goal before we start the subathon. But of course, as I anticipated, I was expecting kind of, I was expecting Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to be kind of quiet when it comes to that kind of stuff on the stream, just because the anticipation is that it's going to be big on Friday. Friday should be big. You just got your 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 just got done getting my butt kicked in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, Mortal Kombat is a hard game, Ninja. Welcome back, everybody, into our best of three series here in Nexus Gaming Series Division C. On the left hand side, it's going to be Zul Jin Distillery. 
with a Garrosh, Vala, Lucio, Tassadar, and Rhaegar. Ragnaros, sorry. Different R. Right side of the map, looking for a quick 2-0 in this best of three series. We are going to be seeing a Jahana, Ana, Kael'thas, Leoric, and nothing. We'll have a Dragoon played by our uh, plant facts. Uh, there is a Twitch prediction going right now. How many level one stacks for Kael'thas by the end? Will he, or how many regeneration globes does he pick, by, pick up by the end? 20 or, uh, 35 or more, 34 or less. Sorry, I haphazardly talked to that one. That's going to be an overpower iron skin activation. Miz would have been close to getting sub done right there, but I think it was only a triple hit. Also, we're not even post level four, so yeah, it doesn't matter. Another toss into Groundbreaker. This time it connects. Miz really low, and that will be Garrosh with an oppressive beginning. Be fresh, living bomb. Holy, 63 HP. To be honest, okay, I like I like that. Yeah, steal the regeneration globe, and vision from the ally team is gonna be in lane. Leoric, does he go Oasin's renewal? No, failed the end to death. He's just stealing the regeneration globe away from Ragnaros. I like it. Literally didn't even need it. He's full on everything. But we take a look, look a leak. Take a leak back down into a look back down into bottom lane. Sorry, everybody. I don't get how I can be using a mushroom and still go slower than other people. Oh, it's it's obviously Nintendo hacks. Johanna steps in right there for a moment. Iron skin activated. A little Lucio harass uh, harassment. We got hot footing out there. As our hell bats go out into lane. Nice gravity lapse onto two. Uh oh, Plan Fax over here on the right hand side is gonna get the shift away. A hungering arrow from Vala will hunger after the crab, but doesn't look like there's any crab meat available on Braxis sold out here. A good aggressive start from the side of Zuljin Distillery, who did have a bit of a struggle in that map number one. I mean, the early game on that we just saw for Infernal Shrines was good back and forth in the first, I don't know, first like eight-ish levels, but definitely once level 10 hit, it really did shift over to everything for heavy group therapy. That's gonna be a groundbreaker toss. A little sound wave from Lucio to try and interrupt. The hungering arrow goes out, the vault forward. But the Ana healing darts are going to be enough. Ally Toss is going to take the Lucio by accident right there. Vala steps into a flame strike and does go down. One to one and kills. We take a look back into top lane. Leoric almost takes out Nutcracker here. Does have that paralyzing rage level four, so extra slow for him. Looks like Ragnaros. Is he going to grab the talent before grabbing the globe? Doesn't look like it. Okay. A little drain hope onto Nutcracker. Wave will be cleared away, focusing on that level one Sulfurous Hungers. Only another eight stacks, seven stacks to go on that. Nope. Math is hard. Nine stacks to go. And for those in the Twitch prediction realm, which is going to be closing soon, this is going to be uh, two stacks currently for Kael'thas. And yeah, there's the, there's the catching fire level four for Ragnaros, so a little unfortunate grabbing that globe and then choosing the talent a little after. It could have just been one fifteenth of the way through. That's some that's some fractional math we can do. Shock rays from Tassadar, static charge level one, 35 of 200. Gravity lapse into flame strike. Biter grenade goes down, and Lucio's picked off first in this engagement. But Dwit looks like that could be another target, and absolutely Johanna. Big flame strike down from Kalefoss. The slow from Leork there was nice, but it's not going to be enough to find a third kill as Ragnaros heads back to top lane channel. He'll be able to gain control over top. The orc is actually back on this already. So heavy group therapy. Looking like they'll be able to get more Zerg charge built up in the top lane here. You can actually see some more Banelings. A Hydra coming out as well. 0% on the left-hand side for Zul'jin Distillery as the wave will be cleared up by Tassadar. Good toss groundbreaker onto plant. Lucio tries to get the interrupt once again. Vala trying to back away. The Biter Grenade does go out. The Indomitable denies the gravity lapse from Kael'thas. That's the end of that one. Wait, what am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? Why am I waiting? You can see, yeah, you can absolutely see them spawn in. Yeah. See? 
Now, of course, there's no Zerg channel, so of course there's nothing happening, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you can you can even see them, they even swap. So red will go down to uh red will go down over here, and blue will go over here next round. But in bottom lane, looks like there is an attempt to groundbreaker toss, but Miz had that activation of the iron skin, so that's why you just see a random groundbreaker there from Garrosh. He actually did go into Loctar Algar, so increase the the Into the Fray's armor by 20. Hitting enemy heroes with Into the Fray reduces cooldown by 12 seconds. Uh, which, actually, what is the baseline on that? It's pretty, it's not very, oh, it's actually 45, okay. Johanna getting chunked a little bit. The Force Wall down from Tassadar. That Kael'thas tries to get out, and that will be Ragnar, or Garrosh finding the kill. Lucio on the left, picked off by that living bomb of Kael'thas. So it's still going to be a trade in the end. Bottom lane held by the side of Zul'jin Distillery as Ragnaros heads back over to top to try and gain control while Leoric works on this camp on the right-hand side. And actually, Ragnaros, he's going to go grab a regeneration globe. He's going to get a hit onto this wave, and he should be able to finish out his level 1 off this wave. Usually you want to throw the uh, more, uh, meteor. Oh! My apologies. I didn't realize that Garrosh was stepping up in bottom lane. Vala takes down the Johanna and the Phoenix. And there you go, you can see the Zerg pin starting to f fill up once again. Baneling coming in. Over in the top lane, Bird trying to get away from Ragnaros. Gets dismounted. Little Empower, Empower Sulfurus gets some damage right there. Lucio amps it up, and yeah, there's a Guardian. Banelings, all that good stuff coming out. Another Ultralisk as well. By the way, did you guys see that Xbox is going to save is saving uh, StarCraft 2? Vala vaults into the flame strike, but she won't be taken down. Gravity laps to the side of Tassadar. A shield glare from Johanna. Second glare, glare activated. Vala gets out with 95 HP at the lowest moment. Lucio comes in, little sound wave to push oh, enemies around. Level 7 just got picked up by Ragnaros. He's going to go into the cauterized wounds. I believe it's the level 7. No, blistering attacks. Toss on the Miz. Iron skin activation. Garrosh steps in the bush to try and get out of vision of the enemy. Lead really low, and that's going to be the living bomb from Kael'thas getting another kill onto the Lucio. Indomitable activation. Garrosh looks at the groundbreaker. Hits it onto the Kael'thas. Looks to back away. Ankle shot. No sub done at level 4. But that Zerg wave is going to be pretty big on both sides. 100% to 90% between top and bottom. And let's see what happens. Vol is already rotated to top. We have a planet cracker from Phoenix to... Um, yeah, wow. Two mi uh, a hundred second cooldown, and um, you cleared the Zerg wave slightly faster. Wonderful. Amazing. Lob away from Ragnaros into top. Oh my god. Really, Stark? Alright, that's amazing. Uh, looks like we'll go through that after this game here, and then we'll get that up on YouTube. I was literally joking that Xbox is saving StarCraft, because if you missed it, during the Xbox showcase today, uh, Xbox, uh, StarCraft and StarCraft 2 are going to be on uh, Game Pass. Pyroblast into, Gar into Garrosh, he actually steps into it, goes for the heal really quickly, and it uh, doesn't work out in the end, but they still ch ch uh, trade the Johanna. Leor comes in right here. Entomb from Lior catches the Lucio. He tries to get out. The Force Wall from Tassadar are down the ground. Phoenix, Lucio traded. It's two for two currently. Bird? Can Bird get out of this alive? Nano boost applied to the Leoric. He's going to Wraith walk in. Lands the Skeletal Swing. Nutcracker trying to break through the the uh, the Bone King here as Garrosh has made his way back in. Throws Kael'thas with no mana into the enemy team. A Living Bomb applied to Ankle Shot. But that will not take down Tassadar as uh, double shield glares come out. Iron Skin activation, but they cannot. Miz cannot get the last hit onto the Tassadar. But Ankle Shot, you gotta be careful here, my friend. Real risky stepping in like that, but won't be picked off and punished. Alright, this is driving me nuts, and I always forget this. It is the Blood Thirst. I always want to say Blood Craze. But that's a talent. Patch notes for HOTS. Yeah, we actually get PTR patch notes, like, every two or three months, I would say. Maybe three or four months is probably more realistic. Yeah, I'd say every three or four months, we probably get, like, a PTR slash live patch. Blood. 
Lava wave from Ragnaros. Does it get the spawning wave? We always like to look at this for funsies. Uh, not the exact spawning wave, but it does get one. So nicely done there. Trying to chase Johanna in. Over in the bottom lane, the camp that was stolen away is going to be cleared out. We do have Garrosh and crew stepping in. There's a mini wave available. Lucio amps it up. Down from the Johanna. High five from Lucio to deny some of the CC onto them. Ragnaros throws a lava ball. Or excuse me, a shifting meteor down. Nutcracker, you can't get out that way, but unfortunately, that's just a corner right there. Pyroblast into Ragnaros will kill the Lava God, as Dwit is going to get a Bloodthirst that heals up. The Planet Cracker comes through, but it's interrupted or canceled. Not 100% sure off of that one right there. Maybe a Reign of Vengeance from Vala stack. Maybe a Black Hole from Tassel. No, that cooldown. Um, no, no. I don't think 19 seconds. It was, it was 19 seconds ago. Anyways... Vala thrown to safety, a rain of vengeance going down again, a groundbreaker into a multi-shot, bird getting low, and will be taken down by the Vala. Is there a well tap available for some of these allies that are getting a bit low here? Doesn't look like it on the left hand side. Another Zerg wave is available, Ragnaros up with a lava surge in 29 seconds, or a lava wave. Toss, Groundbreaker, Living Bomb, but a big Blood Craze coming out for Garrosh right now. He's trying to back away, Tassadar doesn't want to spread that Living Bomb, unfortunately Plant Facts will be able to run down the enemy there and finds the double kill with Johanna. And a 2% charge really quickly as Ragnaros is done with his level 1 and level 4. He's got that Catching Fire activation. So after uh, gathering 25 regeneration globes, activate Catching Fire to gain 25 armor for 3 seconds. Also did go into the Resilient Flame at level 13. When Ragnaros is stunned, he gained 40 armor for 3 seconds. And it is a 15 second cooldown. Fairly, fairly low on that. Nutcracker gives us away. Checks the camp with a shifting meteor. Does scout out the enemies on it. Tassadar steps onto the point. Cancels out the charge at 40% on the right-hand side. As Vala will clear out the fire bat. Or the hell bat. And Entomb from Leoric has found the Lucio. That's a toss groundbreaker. Warlord's challenge. Reign of Vengeance onto a few. The Pyroblast from Kael'thas into lead. But that Lucio's fine. What? Did Kael'thas get nano boosted at the end of that? I think he did. That's why. Planet Cracker. Ankle Shot doubles back. But needs to avoid Leoric's single auto attack. Throws down the forest wall. Leoric thrown over the wall. But Wraith walks away. Living Bomb doesn't kill Garrosh. And a flame strike from Kael'thas does confirm that kill as well. Six overkill! Six! That's gonna be tilting, dude. That's gonna be... It was nano boosted, though. It was nano boosted for sure. By the way, if you did not know that, chat, uh, if, if you are a Ana player, or a Kael'thas player, or have a friend that does one or the other, you can literally throw Pyroblast out, and while it's traveling to its target, you can nano boost the Kael'thas player, and that does apply to the living bomb, or the, uh, the, uh, Pyro bomb. Pyroblast, my god. Six overkill. Oh, that's, that's unfortunate. If Lucio had amped it up, I think he lives there with, like, a little bit of HP. But anyways, all that aside, how are we doing on Globes for Kael'thas for our Twitch prediction? We currently have 15, and we set the prediction of 35 or more, 34 or less. Zerg Pen is filled up on the bottom lane, favoring the side of Heavy Group Therapy, who want to maybe push in and take down a fort here. Vala goes to top. She has a single Ultralisk, but the Ultralisks and the Guardians do summon the Bile Drop. Or the... I think it's a Bile Drop is the name. Ragnaros pops Molten Core, big swing onto the Johanna, trying to get some defenses here. Ankle shot with a black hole thrown out. There isn't a tomb from Leoric, and that is still going to be Tassadar going down. Pyroblast onto Lucio. Is there a nano boost available? Yes, but I think they're anticipating Lucio to go down from that one. Currently, uh, well, we can check it again while the Zerg wave pushes in really quickly. Uh, this time, 295 overkill. This time, a little bit more overkill. As Vala does push things up in top, she takes down the fort. The lava wave in bottom, unfortunately.
unfortunately doesn't clear out the entire Zerg wave. Tassadar being dead here is a little rough. Vala trying to hearth out a top so she can help out with the clear through bottom lane. And we're on 16 talent here. A seven kill difference favoring the right hand side. Dwight getting low, throws the Johanna into tower shots of this mid area. A Biota grenade going down from Ana, but I don't think it connected onto anyone. Lob Ragnaros clearing out the core damage. Those Guardians are getting a little bit low. So is the Dragoon. Phoenix is picked off by Vala. Miz trying to get out of here. Is there Lucio gonna, is he gonna amp things up? Or are they gonna chase in? Looks like the green is out. The sidestep to that gravity lapse. Miz should be taken down here. And that will be uh, delaying things out. That's uh, that's gonna create enough room for Kael'thas and Ana to back off. All right, but with the triple kill, double kill, excuse me, this will be boss call. Bird does scout it out. I think they, they saw the flash of Leork, so they know the enemies are around here. Kael'thas throws in a flame strike, does have the Fury of the Sunwell level 16 for that extra flame strike uh, trigger. Leork jumps onto the point, but it's not gonna, he actually doesn't get a foot onto the point, and I thought he was. Bird sacrifices their body for this, that's a Warlord's challenge. Ana goes flying over to the top lane just about. Archangel and bottom will confirm the fort. How much more can the members of Zul'jin Distillery get gain here? Tassadar with the Oracle level 13 just to get a little bit extra scouting. While stationary gain 30 spell armor for 0.75 seconds and restore 25 health a second. That's just passively but you get a uh, revealing an area that in gradually increases anywhere on the map. So it's a nice little global vision right there. Miz absolutely gets taken out of position by Dwit. Nicely done from Garrosh. The rest of the team follows that up and that is going to be another kill over to the side of Zul'jin Distillery. Yo, Slayer, what's up, bud? Happy Thursday to you. Day before the subathon, bud. Day before our little sub Ethan. Ragnaros pops Molten Core. They're going to step in further. 31 seconds on the Johanna Death Timer. And Tomb from Leoric does find Ankle Shot. That's going to be High Five from Lucio. Planet Cracker out from our Phoenix. But it's not going to stop the enemies. That's a dead Phoenix right there. Actually gets the blink out. Vala needs one multi shot though. Actually, the Phoenix lives. The Archangel's cleared away. There is a Cyclone targeting the core currently and this is looking like it is going to be map number two over to the side of Zul'jin Distillery they just kind of run it down bottom lane at the end GG well played we got a series on our hands ladies and gentlemen we're heading to a map number three <sighs> reputation saved <laughs> hey Slayer, thank you so much, bud. I appreciate it. We'll get to that right now. Nineteen regeneration glows for Kale Vats. Kale Vats had nineteen, so thirty-four or less. <laughs> Let's get into it, everybody. Zul'jin Distiller in the left-hand side is going to be having your Stitches, Brightwing, Kael'thas, Leoric, and Zul'jin. On the, the right-hand side, it's going to be Heavy Group Therapy with our Hanzo, Mephisto, Sonya, Nubrak, and Taranda. Let's take a look. Does Taranda Sentinel hit at the beginning of the game? The battle begins in Does the Sentinel hit at the, be at the beginning of the game? We got channel points. The gates are open. Go. I don't think it hit. I don't think the uh, Sentinel hit their chat. Lunar Flare going out. Miz getting low here. But no headhunter stack for Zul'jin. Dwit! Oh my god, I can't believe it. The phase shift from Brightwing activates in time. And two tanks getting low, but no one being taken down. Regeneration Globe talents at level one uh, for 
Stitches, as well as our Kael'thas. Mentioned Headhunter for the Zul'jin, Hypershift Brightwing, Hanza Redemption. We've got the Unyielding Power for our Mephisto. Sonya considering the level one still. Ranger on the Tyrande and the Nerubian Armor on our Nubarak. So he'll have 65 spell armor when he pops that W. Pro, pro Tyrande tip. Dismount very early so you can W then immediately mount. That's true. Base shift from Brightwing this time ain't coming through and that will be Stitches going down. Zul'jin does have four stacks already, getting body blocked by a Nubrak who was a crab for a moment, taking a couple tower shots. But this uh, Zul'jin does not get taken down. Let's take a look down into bottom lane for a moment here. The double soak rotation from top to mid will continue. Well, let's take a look and see what this is looking like over here between Sonya and our Leoric. We do have Tough as Nails for the Sonya. Leoric with the Oasin's Renewal lands the Drain Hope. Sonya taps onto the treadmill right there to be able to get some movement speed buff to get further away from that Drain Hope. Camps on the left and the right will be grabbed by both teams, the fortification camps. We got 5,700 to 6,700. All right. I don't know why this this song slightly reminds me of the Akuma song from Street Fighter VI. I keep, like, hearing it in, the, in, in my own head. <laughs> Sentinel, scatter, a little bit of poke onto the rotation, but it's not going to deny that fortification camp for either side. First objective phase will be announced in 10 seconds, up for contest in 40. We've got top right and left camps will be traded here, a little bit faster on the right, since Tyrande Hans have already gotten over to this. They will send a Sentinel across the map. That does get vision, so they do know. All right, the enemy's currently working on this camp. There's the vision ending. Back in bottom lane, Leoric still just clearing out the minion wave, all that good stuff. Bird, playing it safe against the Leoric. Another Sentinel just to scout out, see what the enemy's up to. Does hit ankle shot right there and gets a chunk of damage with that Ranger level one. Sentinel pierces the first hero hit. It's width increased by 25 and deals 250% more damage based on the distance traveled, so. Nice bit of damage there on the Kael'thas. Would have been funny if they got the, uh, the snipe onto him. A hook from Stitches. Mephisto actually jumps out just after that hook is retracted. Miz dives in. Lands the Burrow Charge, but no Impale. Scatters onto B-Freesh are pretty good here. Still zero stacks on that Headhunter. We do have one kill, but I don't believe the uh, Zul'jin was around. Or no, sorry, that's the uh, opposite team. Sorry, misread the top bar there. All right. Oh, 15,000 on the uh, Zul'jin now. B-Freesh getting low and gets taken down first in this engagement. As Miz, and oh no, Dwight goes down too. Yikes, forever. And, uh, the, you know, the, the positive of it all, Zul'jin didn't miss out on any stackage. Or at least didn't look miss out on any Headhunter stacks. Did miss out on some stackage. Speaking of, where are we sitting right now with his autos? Currently 26. So he's a tenth of the way through. About. Of our uh, Twitch prediction here, which is going to close out in just a moment. Fortification camp will end right there. Looks like Nutcracker and friends are able to step onto this point. We'll gain control of the first Trigla Protector. Sentinel thrown out by Tyrande. It's a bit of vision. Oh, I'm on the wrong team. Sonya soaking up top lane. It's 8 to 8 in levels. 3 to 0 in kills, favoring the right hand side of heavy group therapy. Channel over 70%. Mephisto dives in, looking for some unyielding power stackage as well as a bit of poke damage. Living Bomb applied. Nubrak starting to, look, to, to move in here. Zul'jin the target. Gets dropped a little bit low. Keeps getting those autos out onto the enemy. And this is going to be the first trick left going over the left-hand side of Zul'jin Distillery. Plant Fax is able to get the natural agility away. Stitches. Somebody trying to get inside. It's going to be Zul'jin. Hanza Redemption level 1 has been completed, but he can lose that stackage if he dies. You lose 3 stacks upon death, so he'll be dropping from 12 to 9 if he does die. The laser out from our Trigla Protector here, the line laser. In bottom lane, we've got Leork Sonia. Looks like she'll rotate to mid really quickly with the conveyor belt. 
grab the double soak for the team while uh, this defense in top does happen. Speaking of top lane, Fort Front Gate is going to be taken down, but I think the Triglav is going to be pulled back. Anubarak burrows in, looking for Ankle Shot. That's going to be decent damage onto the Kael'thas. Lunar Flare doesn't connect. They're chasing in. The body blocks are there. Stitches out of this Triglav, and they still get the kill with Mephisto. A hook onto Plant Fax, and maybe, just maybe, Zul Jin can find his first stack of Headhunter. And yes, 2% increased damage for the Zul Jin, as it is a talent that scales as you get it. No, a quest that scales as you get it. So unlike uh, Master Assassin for Tychus, which is a good comparison, you don't get that stackage or value until the 15 stacks are grabbed. There is a passive gain, but uh, right now, 2% increase for Zul'jin. Looking at our heroics at the top of our screen, Starfall, Tyrande, Cocoon for our Nubrak, Leap, Durance of Hate, and Dragon's Arrow. On the opposing side, Tostitos, Pyroblast, Entomb, Brightwing with the Emerald Wind, Emerald Winds, I believe it is, and Gorge Stitches. Gotta be at least an hour long game. He's at 10, so he's got, uh, what is that, 50? About 50 or so. Where are you at? 50 on the dot. Good morning, non champion. Good to see you, bud. I hope you're having a fantastically flawless day. Get it? Because. Anyways, well, after this map number three, we're going to take a look at the PTR patch notes that apparently dropped uh, about 20, 30 minutes ago. A uh, hook onto Bird, forced to leap away. Low cooldown at 60 seconds, but still burning the heroic. Flawlessly full of meetings? Ew. Well, I hope you don't have meetings tomorrow because tomorrow's the subathon. And you're, I, you know what? Your boss is just getting all the meetings out of the way today, so that way you can enjoy the subathon tomorrow. That's just it. I know it. Impale from a new brack. He did go into Shed Exoskeleton level 4, so he threw down the Impale, popped a W, or the Carapace, and uh, zoomed on out of there, as he does have mount speed for 3 seconds. Flawless techniques and enjoyers are everywhere. Look at all two of them. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. Sentinel does hit lead right there from the bottom lane. Next objective phase should be announced soon. It will be over in the top. Both teams are getting set up with some items, as I thought you could check there, and you can't check there either. I thought you could check on carried objective, but I guess... Oh, right, no, it's only for doubloons and, uh... It's only for doubloons and gems of web weavers. You can't actually check what they're carrying, which is kind of weird to me. Leap in for Sonya, focusing onto the Kael'thas. The Dragon's Arrow from mid lane connects. The Durance of Hate to follow that up. The layered CC is beautiful from the side of Heavy Group Therapy as the Cocoon onto Stitches slows him down from helping out Lead. The Brightwing self-casts uh, the Pixie Dust, and she is going to be taken down by a Hanzo Q. Now, Dewitt does get gorged. Is there going to be CC to deny the gorge over the wall? The Oh, my God, I can't believe it. The Wanguin is able to... It's not going to be taken down, but the fort front gate actually got annihilated right there. So even if Taranda was pushed over the wall, I think she would have lived in the end. A couple utility items used there. By the committer in fortification camp. Sonya starts heading down towards bottom. We do have five seconds on Brightwing. She should have a phase shift off of cooldown for when she respawns, and that's going to be the case. Also, that's why Kala doesn't let me play Hanzo anymore. Rude, Kala. Rude. 27 regeneration glows for Stitches. 25 on the Kilthos. A polymorph from Brightwing as Zul'jin lands the Bone Slicer. Or the Grievous Cleave, I think it is. Onto one. Auto attack still raining out. Leap in from Sonya. Dragon Zero. Might have been a little unnecessary, but you know what? Sometimes you gotta, you gotta prove a point as the fishing hook from Stitches looks for someone, but no prime gamings on the end of that hook. Sonya Spear, she went Mythical Spear at level 13 right there, as it does always pull. And But if you uh, hit an enemy hero, right, if you do hit an enemy hero, oh, if it doesn't hit an enemy hero, then you get the cooldown reduction by five seconds. I always forget which way it is. But yes, not, it's it's like a ETC Crowd Surfer. Not hitting an enemy hero with your ability gives you a cooldown. Ubrek still chilling on the point, 85%. We got a little ground slam there from Wit. Does uh, have the under pressure. 
Level 13, Cocoon, Durance of Hate. That's a really good setup right now. Tostingo activated by the Zul'jin. Starfall from the Tyrande. I do think that is a dead Zul'jin. Right wing gets picked off as well. Overtime on the right hand side is the Nutcracker's body block. That's gonna be a toss. There's a leap in from Sonya. I said toss, sorry, that was leap from Sonya. So use that Garrosh game we just had on Braxis as that stitch is going down. A triple kill over to the side of Heavy Group Therapy who are like, all right, that game two is a fluke. We are gonna be playing aggressive. It's a nine kill difference, a whole level lead to the right hand side. And my oh my, Chad, is Heavy Group Therapy looking to open up the map. They'll take down top lane fort. Sonya's already pushing things up in mid. I'd love to see the Triglov get top lane fort, rotate into the minion wave that Sonya's pushed here, and then absolutely have Sonya rotate to bottom and start working on that. That's what I'd like to see. We'll see what this Division C players end up doing. That's uh, What I'm talking about is kind of obvious, but sometimes teams just sit and they're like, well, if we get top lane, we can open up the, the, the map even further. We could go for keep. We could get consistent catapult pressure in a lane that has no periodic to match. Uh, especially with control point C coming up next, but this is the nice call. Unfortunately, the Triglove is not going to get as much value as I was hoping for them. Heavy group therapy will get most of the fort front gate. The line laser could... Oh, no, Anubarak's going to just jump out of this. They're going to leave the Triglov as a derelict on the ground. The leap from Sony is pretty big. Hanzo is pulled in by a hook from Stitches, which denies the arrow for a moment. But the Durance of Hate and the arrow still connect in the end. And Brightwing will be the one to go down. B-Freeze trying to back away. 300 and something HP as Hanzo gets gorged. A new break, Burrow charges in. Is there a natural agility for Hanzo? He's, he's body blocked here. He's caught between it. Stitches and a whole lot of enemies, and Anubarak does go down as well as Hanzo. Stitches will be traded. A Pyroblast from Kael'thas onto Bird. Is there enough damage to take down Bird? Doesn't look like it's the word, but the Drain Hope is pretty good. Leoric is going to Wraith walk in. He cancels it early. He doesn't have a way to close the distance, and Bird lives. Two headhunter stacks for the Zul'jin currently as a Sentinel from Tyrande almost takes down Nutcracker. The Spear from Sonya is enough. There's going to be an ensnare. Another Sentinel got the reset from that kill. The Facia from Brightwing as she has respawned. And that'll be Zul'jin able to back away just fine. But hoo-wee, that was a sketchy moment for our troll. Oh, I didn't even see the assist pings. There's a leap in from Sonya once again. Lead is going to get the Emerald Wind to push back the enemies. And Brightwing with the self-cast Pixie Dust does get that bonus movement speed. A Dragon's Arrow from mid lane fort connects onto the enemies, but it's still Sonya the one to go down to Lior who does get some revenge. Three stacks for the Zul Jin. Let's take a look here. Who does he need to kill? It looks like Mephisto and Taranda are the targets of our of our uh, of our troll hunter here. Troll hunter? I think it's troll hunter. Stitch is under pressure, 10 stacks currently. Another Sentinel going out from Tyrande. Does have the Harsh Moonlight as well as the Empower. A hook onto Miz. The Nubarak is going to be polymorphed as well. The Ensnare attempted by Zul'jin doesn't find anyone. Gorge onto the Mephisto. They need this as a target. Sentinel slows down Stitch a little bit. Emerald Wind to push people away. They really want to take down the Skeletal Nervous System, and he has turned into a pig. That's four out of five stacks for the Zul'jin on Headhunter. Taranda, the only target that needs to be taken down. What does that mean? Well, it'll be a total of 10% bonus attack. Or damage, sorry. But you also get the 1.1 range increase, which would take you to 7.7 .7 range. You're still under tower range because the fort towers are a 7.8 range. So Zul'jin would have a 7.7. .7. He's currently at 6.6, .6, as you can see right there. He has the 8% uh, from this uh, takedown, from the Headhunter, sorry. And our Bida Committer will be grabbed. Control point C up in 10 seconds. 20 talents here, almost here for both sides. Uh, what does the under pressure give? Let's take a look at this really quickly. We don't see it a ton. It, it does pop up here and there. So baseline, passively, increase the slam damage by 25. After damaging heroes with vile gas six times, permanently increase the damage of slam by one to a maximum 70. So you can get in total 100 extra damage 
on your uh, slam there. Uh, ally hook onto ankle shot. The dragon's arrow goes right past Zul'jin since he was put inside the cocoon. Seems like everyone's forgot Zul'jin. The Emerald Wind pushes back the enemies. Tostingo is available. There's going to be an ensnare. Another helping hand. Tostingo activated just as the Anubrek lands. That burrow charge impale. Starfall from Taranda. Two heroics burned for... I mean, everything's on cooldown. Durance of Hate was used earlier. The music just weirdly shifted in the game. So Durance of Hate off a of cooldown. And leaps up in 25. 67 on our Tostango. 20 seconds on Emerald Wind. It is singular. It's not Emerald Winds. It's singular on that. Okay. 20s are here. We've got the Intensifying Winds. Or the intensive wins. So now it's a five second cooldown. We've got the Master Hooker Stitches. We'll also be seeing Buried Alive, Flamethrower Kale Foss, and Zul Jin with the surprise for you. I don't think the bonus bounces count for stacks though, right? I don't think that gives you extra stackage. Because I think it's only the initial target, right? I think it's the only the initial target. I don't. I'm, I, I feel like. I feel like. So if if it was extra stackage, I think we would see a more surprise for you. On the opposing side, we have the unspeakable horror. We'll also be having that uh, bullseye, composite spear for the Sonya, as well as the rewind for Nubrak and Starfall upgrade, which Lunar no Celestial Wrath. Durance of Hate goes out, it finds the stitches, the Dragon's Arrow goes wide, the Bullseye does get the stun, Miz trying to back away, had the rewind activated, gets the Burrow Charge out of there. Starfall from Tyrande is pretty big, and Leork is the one to go down. Miz, there an, uh, there's gonna be a beautiful activation of Carapace right there, denies most, if not all, the damage of that living, or that Pyroblast. Nubrak burrows in, finds the Burrow Charge onto Zul'jin, the Durance of Hate from Mephisto finds the Brightwing. And you might be like, how did Mephisto get another Endurance of Hate out? Level 13, homies. A lot of damage from level 13. Or not a value from level 13. We'll talk about that in a second here with the synergy of the level 4. Skull Missile's raining out. That's going to be Hanzo trying to take down Dwit. That's a Sentinel kill for the Taranda! Exclamation Owl. And Zul'jin, no Tustingo. Oh no, he does have Tustingo available. Does he activate it? He does activate it, but he's just trying to back away. The Impale won't find him. Is there another Sentinel from Tyrande? Doesn't look like she's got one to throw out. So what's going on with, like, what's going on with Mephisto right now? Well, the level four, Spite, increased regeneration globe healing duration by 150%. Every tick of regeneration globe healing activates Lord of Hatred, the trait, reducing basic ability cooldowns by one second. What does level 13 do? Hysteria. Lord of Hatred also reduced the cooldown of Mephisto's heroic ability. Mephisto is healed for 15% of his maximum health and mana when he casts his heroic ability. And what is Lord of Hatred? Well, essentially, Lord of Hatred is hitting enemy heroes with basic abilities, reduces Mephisto's basic ability cooldowns. Skull Missile and Shade of Mephisto grant 1.5 seconds of cooldown reduction per enemy hero hit, and Lightning Nova grants 0.3 seconds per hero hit. Some really cool synergies. We don't see it very often. Uh, usually level 13 is at Horrid Skull. Dragon's Arrow, Lead taking a lot of damage, a leap from Sony to confirm the kill. The mid fort does go down, so the Durance of Hate finds this Kael'thas, the ally hook, with that unkillable from the Master Hooker level 20. As our Zul'jin sits at 29 stacks, 19 minutes in, that's 147 as Stitches goes fishing. But once again, no subs at the end of that hook as Anubrak burrows in the Composite Spear from the Sonya going in as well. Be free, get through. They have the activatable. I think Tostingo like, just came off a cooldown as he died. Zul'jin will be killed, but Sonya and Anubrak do get picked off here. Triglaw Protector C, by the way, has just been chilling. Blue team has taken control of Who's the last head? It's Taranda. She is the only one not to die. Yo, Kalavath, what's up, bud? I just finished the uh, the second uh, Ruthafus, like side story book. I finished the Bast one, so I have read all of the Ruthafus uh, King Killer Chronicle stuff. So now I need to find a new book. Now I need to find a new book, which I was gonna ask Chad about in between games, and I forgot to do that already.
Just chilling. Are they good, Kalibov? I was thinking about reading. There's a brand like someone had recommended. Um, uh, I'll look at it after this game. We'll, we'll talk about it after this game. We might see his guest character show up in Vox Machina 3. I'm hopeful. Oh, that'd be awesome. I hope there's a joke about his book series. I really do. I really, really hope that someone, like, there's, like, a slight book, like, a slight reference to, like, are you going to finish that series? Because <laughs> I think, Stark, it was you or someone else told me that, like, he was on Critical Role, like, a, like, one of the episodes or whatever, and, like, people were joking, like, they made a couple jokes about him not finishing his book yet. Yeah, yeah, it was you who told me. It was you who told me. Okay. I knew someone did recently. Alrighty. 49 stacks for our stitches. I can't believe this trigger love got literally zero value. It moved from here to here. I think Sonya might have triggered the dance animation. I'm not sure. Led did get hit with the Sentinel in the rotation, though. Uh, is in several episodes of Campaign 1, uh, one of your favorite guests. Ooh! Well, I, then I really hope that he's in, uh, Season 3 of Vox Machina. Absolutely. I feel like the, the show is so established that they should pull in things like that for, for, like, the core fans. And when I say established, I mean in the sense of, like, that show has great viewership, like, people love it. It's very much established that people are, like, anticipating and waiting for it. Like how Black Mirror is, like, established. Like, people look forward to it. There's a big viewer base. It probably gets good rewatchability. Yo, Hassler, what's up, bud? Happy Thursday to you. It's the day before the subathon. Subathon Eve. Be sure to leave uh, subs out for Bandit. Which I think, by the way, we're nine subs away from our sub goal. If we can hit it today, that'd be awesome before the subathon. Nice 3.30 subs before we start tomorrow's stream. Excuse me, sorry. Allergies kicking my butt still. So... Zul'jin's still waiting for that Tyrande kill. 7 to 18 in kills, favoring the right-hand side of Heavy Group Therapy. Stitches goes looking with a hook. Nothing to be found. 23 minutes in. Control point A, number 2, or A2. A squared is going to be popping up soon. We got another showcase today? Yeah, I watched the Xbox showcase. There was no Liza P stuff. And the Capcom showcase was mostly Monster Hunter, so we didn't even watch that on stream. I wouldn't say the showcases were like a bummer, but there's just nothing like super exciting for me as a as a gamer. Like maybe maybe a couple things here and there looked interesting, but nothing where I'm like, oh my god. Okay, Cocoon spits out the Hanzo. The Durance of Hate will be activated. Leap from Sonya. Dragon's Arrow from Hanzo. A lot of heroics being whiffed here, unfortunately. But Anubarak goes in. Sonya lands the follow-up spear. And Nutcracker almost taken down by the Tyrande Lunar... Uh, the uh, Starfall. Does have that Celestial Wrath level 20. Which is going to be increased the slow of Starfall by Secret and cause it to apply Hunter's Mark to the enemies inside the area of its effect. Living Bomb applied. Control point A, number two, is up and available. Brightwing dead for 40 seconds. She'll have phase shift when she respawns. A hook goes out from Stitches, but no Sony to be grabbed by that one. Yeah, yeah, as I said yesterday, the Xbox showcase happened at 3 a.m. my time, and Capcom happened at 7 a.m. my time. I woke up at 5.30 today, because I had to video chat with my family, so I had to get up early and shower and stuff. Just an hour earlier than normal. But it actually works out really good because yesterday I woke up at 6 a.m. Today I woke up at 5-ish and t tomorrow I got to wake up at 4-ish. So kind of works out that I'm slowly waking up earlier and earlier. Knock on wood, it shouldn't be hard to get sleep tonight. Leap, Durance of Hate, 
but the ally hook, does it save the Zul'jin? I don't know, I don't know, and killable, Tostingo's activated. Trying to get behind the fort front gate, Zul'jin will be able to do so. Activates the regeneration, meanwhile, Miz is just trying to get out of here. Throws the cocoon on the stitch, the sidewall's taken down, but the Emerald Winds push him back. There's gonna be a Burrow Charge from Anubarak, and I guess the Pyroblast wasn't fully casted there. I thought Miz was gonna be taken down. Another hook connects, and this time, Kael'thas does get the kill, but Leork will be traded about 10 seconds earlier. Another hook going out. It's going to be Polymorph Hanzo. Emerald wins from that bright wing. Push back a few of the enemies. As a reminder, it's a five second cooldown already off of said cooldown as another hook connects the ensnare as well. God dang, god dang. That's going to be a triple kill in total as Sonya looks to back away. Taronda is going to get out of here. That will be Trigla Protector at 99% on the right-hand side for heavy group therapy. Meanwhile, in top lane, someone's got to go deal with this. A Sentinel thrown out, but no one will be hit by that. In top lane, as I mentioned, catapults are fixated onto this keep. Uh, that will be a siege camp as well. Angle Shot will make quick work of the wave, but will they be able to save the keep? No! It's not quick enough work. A bonk off the fort front gate, or the keep front gate in mid lane, as Bird will not be taken down. Another Sentinel going out right there, connecting onto this Zul'jin. We'll activate his health depletion tool, the Amani Rage. 59 regeneration globes for the Stitches, by the way. Uh, one more, and he'll, at, he'll be at 15% bonus movement speed. No, he'll be at 20% bo bonus movement speed, right? Yeah, 20%. Right? Yeah, because he's 5, 10, 15. 20. Okay, sorry. Caster math today, apparently. Sitting there staring at math that's like, yes, this makes sense. And it's like, no, I don't believe myself. Oh, good old brains. All right, Trigla Protector, the second one, grabbed on the left-hand side. We have Zul, Jin, Kael'thas inside. Meanwhile, Stitches, Leoric, and Brightwing. Look to assist the allies in this push. Mephisto jumping in as there was a cocoon onto the stitches, trying to step further past, allowing the allies to clear out the Strigglot Protector, which has a heck load of HP. Hanzo Redemption is completed once again. That is going to be a Rocket Glove to push back Miz. Trying to take down the Anubrek, who's able to burrow charge away. There's a Lunar Flare from Tyrande, the as well as the uh, Starfall. It doesn't seem like Stitch is too concerned about having that armor debuff from the Hunter's Mark. So what's the Triglov currently sitting at with HP? 9k. About 10k HP. It's going to be less than that, but still. Top lane wave still pushing in. A hook onto Sonya. Pyroblast in Tomb. There's a Burrow Charge from Nubrak. He's going to try and help out right there. As that will be a Durance of Aid into Dragon's Arrow. Nubrak pops the rewind. They want to take down this, this Leork, but they just can't find the kill into him. Another hook going out from Stitches. Won't find anything. And could this be the end? Yorick Wraith walking in, goes for the Drain Hope, can't land anything. Triglov with the jumping punch. A Gorge onto Hanzo, an immediate Polymorph from Brightwing, and that's a hook onto Miz as well. Healing reduction applied from the Master Hooker level 20. As there was a Cocoon onto Stitches. Core shielding on the left hand side, by the way, is going down, and so is the HP. They're literally losing the game getting kills. They are literally losing the game getting those kills. There is one catapult doing God's work currently. And um, your hearth is going to be moot. The hearth technically was unnecessary. Leoric goes down. Anubarek turned into a pig, is able to uh, burrow charge away. The rocket glow from the core defenses is here. Kael'thas is, uh, oh, that's a good hook. Leap in from Sonya to try and create some space for the Wangwin. And it looks like, yes, uh, Kael'thas is pushing out waves. So it, it, it's not fully moot, but still. Still, it was uh, almost, it was almost kind of, it was, it's just kind of comical there for a second. Bird low, composite spear to get away. Zul'jin pushed back by the core defenses. Hanzo has respawned. 10 seconds to go on Mephisto. As the rocket glove, the dragon's arrow, the scatter is good. The scatter is good for Hanzo. And now Sonya spears in the Emerald Wind to push back the enemy's Nutcracker. I don't know about that respawn location, but it doesn't seem like Leork is too concerned. 
And this game, 29 minutes, 30 minutes in, continues to go on with 40 stacks on our Zul Jin. That is 200 stacks in total. Durance of Hate with the hook in. There's going to be an Entomb from Leoric, but Melio does not get caught inside. Okay, Sonya working on camp. Redemption for Hanzo at 9 stacks out of 12. 68 regeneration globes for Stitches. He's going to make it 69 right here off this camp. Looks for a hook over the wall near the keep, but no one to be found. 69 regeneration globes. Nice, 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 nice. Kael'thas scouted out right there. I think Brightwing may be seen by that Sentinel. No, it's the Vision's just out of range. So clear out this camp. Control point B, the second control point B is going to be up and available soon. We have core at 21% on the left, core at 100%. Both teams have a win condition. Right side through mid, left side through top lane. Another Sentinel goes scouting. Does scout out that this uh, Bida Committer was grabbed by the enemy. Here's our control point B, number two. Alright, Brightwing grabs this camp. That'll be Zul Jin as well, just fortification. Gun grab, that's Sonya hooked. Durance of hate from Mephisto as they jump in. The Dragon's Arrow goes to the side, the Tostingo. Activated by our Zul Jin as well. And uh, unfortunately for the side of heavy group therapy, they're unable to find a kill. Just as Zul'jin is unable to take down Tyrande and get his last. Oh no, he did take they did take down Tyrande at a point, so he did finish Headhunter, my bad. I didn't even see that. I, I still thought Tyrande was... I thought Tyrande wasn't around when Zul'jin died earlier, but it looks like, yes, absolutely the case. He's done with Headhunter. So he's got that seven point set. Oh, are they backdooring? Leoric has scouted this all out. There's a couple hearts leaping from Sonya. And Anubrak will tank a bit of damage. They're just going straight to core. The enemy has re uh, his heart out. Starfall from the Tyrande activated on the core. The ensnare from Zul'jin focusing onto Anubrak. Zul'jin thrown inside the cocoon. Anubrak burrows to the side. Hanzo goes down to the Nexus forces as the core shielding is dropping low. But is there enough damage available to take it down? Living Bomb popping off. 4%, 1%. And Anubrak lived just long enough to get the last... Mandible hit, GG well played. Reverse, or excuse me, heavy group therapy will take this series two to one. No reverse sweep in that. Last mandible hit, man. Last mandible hit. Nicely done. All right, Zul Jin had 43 stacks. Zul Jin had 43 stacks. That, I believe, is not enough. I am pretty sure that's like, what, like 215-ish? 215-ish? 215-215? 